How you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just out. I'm doing my first bass quest of the year. So I've just come down to Cart Gap. It's, uh, it's about quarter to ten. It's Tuesday the 18th. I've just got one rod, one reel, a few bits and pieces. I'm going to work my way all the way to the left, all the way up to pass through Cart Gap. So I've just come to a little bit near Eccles here, so I can park. I'll go through Cart Gap and all the way up to Axborough. I'm going to turn around and make my way back. Well, I'll show you where we are. Okay, we've got Lessingham down here to my right, leading on to C. Paulin, the RSPB centre down there, or the, the sanctuary for the birds. The start of the breakers, you go through Lessingham and it starts to C. Paulin. That looks absolutely bassy today, look at that surf. I mean, that looks ripe for a bass, doesn't it? Absolutely ripe for a bass. Two boats out there, look, fishing. Two little vessels. We make them out. Big floating oil rig. To my left here, there's Cart Gap. Cliffs in the distance with the lighthouses. Absborough. So I'll make our way down, I'll just show you what we've got. I've got the 10 foot Shakespeare's spin rod. I'm just starting with um, Savage Gear Ultra Realistic Sand Eel, uh, 28 gram. I've got 40 pound braid, uh, Shakespeare <coughs> Mac XT 5000 mil with nine strand Hercules braid, and I've just put a uh, about 18 inch leader on there it's 25 pound flora max and i've just connected that via uh, an all bright knot and then down to a little swivel i'll just put a few blinging bits on there an 150 pound little one of the little mini rig clips quick change clips and all i've got with me a mixture of Dexter wedges and various weights and sizes. Got some uh, these are these are really good, these shads, metal shads. Again, they're all about 28, 30 gram, 32 gram. I've got some smaller Shakespeare slithers. These are really good. I've had them a few bass before. A few more Dexter wedges. Some of the holographic ones. It's one I've just done myself green, blue. We've got some of the uh, Fox Rage Xander Pro. Uh, that's in 15, 10 and 7.5 and gram. We've got a small packet of sand eels, weighted sand eels. We've got a few uh, sort of medium diving some, uh, head sort of deep diving shads there and some surface and subsurface these are worth a go some of these subsurface ones um, minnow shads the dive about a meter and a half two meters and that's it basically I have got a few um, I have got a little box in there with some uh, mackerel feathers in it I can put it all on the bottom if I need to, but I'm going to start. You know what I didn't bring? Oh, I forgot it. <laughs> I've just bought it. My Pachenkos. Oh, I bought some uh, Pachenkos in white and I haven't got them. Damn. Never mind. But well, uh, with this nice surf on, I'm going to start with the uh, sand hill and we'll see how it goes. So let's get back into the left bank. See you down there in a minute.
Massey. Well, let's have the first cast of the new season, shall we? Hope it's better than last year's. Not getting great distance with this, to tell you the truth. Might put some heavier on in a bit, but we'll see when we get closer to the pens. We'll just walk and cast, walk and cast. Put the uh, leader on. I think this is the best setup I've had. I've got the leader outside the rod up, so there's no chance of any getting caught or anything like that. It's 40 pound braid, 25 pound floor mat. Go for a steady retrieve. I'll check the tides in a minute, but I think it must have been about low tide, about half seven, so, uh, sorry, high tide, about half seven this morning. But we'll check. Ties ever so slightly running left to right. So it's definitely on the ebb. But I didn't want to get here too early because hopefully on the way back we'll fish it at low. That's just bouncing along the bottom. I'm loving this setup. It's literally got up this morning. The Shakespeare salt 
we only got in 4,000, it's a bit small, but. And I've gone for a shorter rod, a bit more grunt in it. Might try one of the little metal there. Uh, metal hard laws in a second. See if I can get a little bit further distance. I want to be out near those breakers if I possibly can. Or get beyond the breaker. Just gonna watch my feet. I was having an arm, should I bring my wellies? But nah. <laughs> Let's not start with well wet feet for the day, should we not? Go for a quicker retrieve this time and then we'll pause it. We'll quick go and change this. I will put this back on when we get further to the left there. We're just going to pull out. I've got a little box here, I'll show you. I'm going to use this, it's clipped on. Clipped onto my thing. I'm just going to use this as like a little working thing. I can put half a dozen laws in there. I've got a few in there, but uh, I'll take some of them out and put what I need in it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to start off this little selection here. Let's put this on at the minute. We'll give that a cast out. It's got a few more sand eels. I'm going to put a small selection, a few, bit of Dexter Wedge, see if I can get a bit more distance. I'll keep that in there. Try the fox in a bit. Right, I'll put that in my box. Look. Their mocks are sharp. Right, let's get my backpack back on and let's get going. Right, let's give this a cast and see see how we do. I do like the look of it here where it kicks up. Goes so much further, so much further. That's just bouncing on the bottom, actually. I can get it where those waves are breaking, it'd be nice.
just gonna have to go down this structure. Don't want to get too close to the rocks because I don't know where, where they lie in the sea. Just want to run down the side of it if I can. Keeping that braid tight till it'll start winding in. You just got to be a bit careful when you go to the left because it's running left to right. And if you're casting 70, 80, 90 yards, you'll drift, the law will drift behind the back of the breakers. And then you lost it. Stay here and change the law over. Okay, I'm going to try this slightly heavier, about 42 gram Dexter wedge. It's a bit holographic blue. I've got a couple of presents for Father's Day, and uh, my daughter I just wrapped up this. Uh, little twisty tie things. I thought, ah, oh, I'll just put them on to the eyes of the swivel. And maybe it just looks like this fish or the law chasing a few little uh, tiny little fry. It's not doing any harm, so right, just make sure we're not twisted over the on top. I want to see if I can get a bit further to the breakers because the breakers are they're breaking quite far out today. They're not too close to the shore. Well, that's a lot further, Cap. A lot further. I'm just going to have a quick play for all the laws and see which one performs and which ones. I need, uh, one thing I do when I get home, I'm going to strip all the line off of here. Because I've got a uh, 20 pound braid underneath, but I'm going to fill it all up with 40 pound. and fill it right out flush. You do it for an extra sort of like 50 yards on really. Not quite enough line for my liking. I mean, that's virtually out, but I've got to be a bit careful. I don't know if I've tied that on, so. That's, that's getting me to where I want to be. Where the waves are breaking out. So I think the bass will be on the back of the breakers or in the breakers, in and around there. Now we're on the ebb. I mean, at high tide, you probably would have got them a bit closer in, but I'll have one more cast here, then we'll walk to the left. Now we're all right. Well, 
I can stick with this door for the minute. I like the way it feels, I like the way it's casted. I just wish this water would uh, clear up a little bit more. Not, doesn't look too bad when you've polarising glasses on, but... Yeah, I like the way that looks. Alright, let's get this back on. Trying to take this off as often as I can when I get to somewhere to save your back a bit. It's not that heavy, I haven't got too much in it, but the camera game, the flask and stuff. Let's have a walk to the other where the red post is. Bloody shot. Oh. There are the hooks on that, man. Okay, just going to switch over now. I'm just going to try this 28 gram little sand deal. Got a weighted head on it. We've got a pack of six of these, different colours. I'll go for the realistic one. A bought, a bought, a bought. That's because it's a lot lighter, of course, that. I don't want that going over the breaker. I don't get much distance, but I'm only want to use this for down the side of the breakers. I just worked the bottom nicely though. Right? Perfect. Let's give it a cast. One more cast. Just gonna let that sink. A 
bit too light, but... It looks good. Yeah, I've just put this back on. We're starting to get into the bass lands now. This is what I call the bass land. Fishing in the bass lands. Wet foot. Our water's cold. on my head now, I think. I can really work this one quite slow, quite nice floor. Different angle for you. Stay on my head for a bit. I wish you'd see this day, Phil. I knew I should have bought the bloody wellies. the wedge is in, can get a bit more distance. Till we get over there, where all those pens are. Make a move. Okay, we're entering the bass land. I have one quack cast down here. I knew 
Oh, sure, Bob, the Wally. The Royal War is a bit too cold for you, Shadow, please. I've noticed this goes to the road since I was doing work like that. Let's get that flat. Uh, one thing you've got to be careful of, we have got play, because the wind's coming towards us, going down the beach, you cast into the breakers, it's not the law you want to be watching, it's the, uh, the bow in the line. That's a risky cast if I get my braid stacked on there on the way in. And I know from low water, those metal barriers go further out. It's guiding your law through these. Maybe in a couple of hours, we can get a bit closer. Right, let's test my casting abilities and take, take my backpack off of this. I've got to get it so the law comes straight back at me. I'll cast slightly to the left. Just stop that line. I don't want that line to go around the, that post. I'm going to bring it back quite fast. I'm just going to guide it between these posts. Keep the rod tip a bit higher, I don't want to get snagged. Like that, that's lost. I don't think we're going to get this out. For all the love in the world, let's pull for a break on this one. Okay, I'm just going to tie a new leader on. Just going to make a loop. Good six, seven inches. Just going to get the braid. You go. You can either go either way. Up, up for the loop or down, which, whatever which way you choose. When you come back out, you've got to go in the same direction. I always prefer going up the loop. Put about 10 inches of lime, then wrap that round about 18 times. Try and keep the loops or the wraps so they don't go over each other. Take your finger out, get the end of the braid. I check this line. See that line is now going back down. So this tag end's got to go back down through the loop, same direction. Just gently wet that, and ever so slowly straighten it out, pull, straighten it, pull. Straighten it out, pull it down, wet it, get the tag ends, pull the tag ends. As tight as you can. There you go. Need to tidy that up now. With this, because it's normally I'll cut it as close as I possibly can, but because 
the leader knot is outside of the rod I can leave a little bit of tag on just in case there's any slippage and it's about 18 inches any line away Right, hope we don't lose any more because I only bought one spare swivel with me and quick link. That's sozzy all in it. Be a bit more careful. Well, hopefully on the way back if the tide's dropped I know where it's pinned to might be able to get it back so wet that line hold a tag pull that down right I've got plenty of those Dexter wedges, so I ain't too bothered. It was an expensive law, so... You buy packs of 10, makes it cheaper. Right. Come to the end of the pens, but I'm going to risk it here. Might be a bit risky. I'm going to go this side, just to this side if I can. You don't know what's underneath the water, that's the problem. Ah, oh, we're fine. It says. That's famous words. Right, I'm gonna have to jump for it. That didn't work.
quite nice, the old ship's bell. Or some piece of art. Doesn't say where it's from. Sorry, I'm not much on camera today, but uh, we're at Haysborough, Hapsborough. I'm just going to fish along these pegs and then look at that. I'm going to have a look at the tides in a minute and see when it's starting to turn and flood because I can get beyond here today, but a high tide, the water comes way beyond these, and you can see there's a short, narrow bit of a cliff there, coast bit. And that, uh, that gets flooded out behind there, so you'll be, you'll be stuck against the rocks. It looks like someone's put ropes up. <laughs> Some blue ropes up there in case you get stuck. You can climb up. I hope not. Yeah, I've been here before where the water's up to those rocks there. So, I've tried a couple of different laws. I'm going to have a rubbish from the box and see if I can find something a little bit heavier just to get a little bit further distance. It's quite flat at the minute. I quite like the look of this. We've got a nice blue bit of water there. Right, I'll change this law. I put a Shakespeare slither on. Casts like a bullet. You get miles, but seems to drift with the tide a little bit. Ends up coming down to the right. Okay, guys, it's half past twelve. I've just checked online. It was low tide at half eleven. Well, sorry about 11 o'clock, 10 past 11. So, yeah, we're about an hour and a half after low water. It's high tide again at half past four. So we've got four hours. So I'm going to go to the left. Probably give it another hour and a half at the most down there. And we'll work our way back. No fish yet, but we'll keep plugging away. So I've just gone back on the Dexter wedge. I've just stepped it up to like a 42 gram. So I can get a bit further distance. Without further ado, let's make tracks. Further down that way. It seems to be a bit clearer here. It's not as rough. It's a nice line of blue. But I've never been as far down to the left as there. Because every time I've been down, you can't get past it. Because I say, by high water, this top water will come over this embankment. There's only a short area to the cliffs there, you can see that you know, the cliffs are still wet. Yep, yeah, we're gonna head up, up, up over here. Run away! Stand on it.
Shorty. Right, we'll have to run for it. Time to run. If you come here, it's got to be a bit careful, watch the tide because you can see the high tide is flooding into this bay here. It's come up to this wall and you can't really get up on that cliff bit there. We well, can get up there for a bit of safety, but you'd be stuck. You can't really get back around. You can see it's all soaking wet along here. But I won't be around that long. It's high tide at half past four. So what I'm gonna do is have a walk and then I'll uh, one or two casts, walk as far as I wanna go and then I'll probably turn around and make my way back. a few cheeky casts of course because it'd be rude not to Let's have a walk up here, see what all this stuff is about. Right, can we get in and out? Bit tricky. Be a bit of a timed run. Yeah, it all looks a little bit too uh, gnarly to fish. Give it a go here. Yeah. I'll have to have a look online and find out the history of what all this was. There was an old dockyard, fishing pub, and old village or something. If anyone knows, 
Oh, that was it for me now. Any local people know what all this was? Probably an old village, I would imagine. Lost to the sea, like Atlantis. Let's have a little explore along here. I'm not going to go too far. Because it looks pretty inaccessible. This definitely looks like an old barn or warehouse. Or An old pillbox. I mean, it's a hell of a walk, but you can park up at Haysborough near the church and then probably walk through. I don't know how long it would take, but this looks a hell of a beach. Again, you'd have to be very careful because if, you, uh, if you're on a high tide, you've got nowhere to hide it here. That's for sure. Nowhere to hide. very fishy. Right, I'm going to go where that geezer is, just to the left. It looks like a little break in a pen and a ramp or something. Let's check it out. Oh, look at this place, guys. Wow. This could be a place to get your beach gear. You definitely have to park at Hatsburg in the church and walk. I suppose if you travel light. I'm going to have to look at the map, I mean, uh, is this the start of Trimmingham Beach or further up this way, or Munsey? Look at this. Now this is a place to mark in your diary. I must go. Oh, let's have a few spins in here. Put this backpack down. I'm going to sit and chill for a bit and have a coffee in a minute. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I think that rod's all gone over by the look of it. Make sure we're free and easy. We're always free and easy, but... Just like you were meant. Definitely have to get this foot, uh, this line stripped off and filled up 40 pound braid all the way through. I think yeah. So you definitely have to look at the tides. Um, we did come down here, as I say, for this day session, where we'll be able to get back out when you want to get out. Whether you be spending the night here, the night on the cliff. 
ini. Sand hill on in a minute and have a go down the size of this, uh, these stanchions, these posts. Come on, there's got to be a bass out there. Well, I might not have caught a fish, but I was just walking along the beach <laughs> and my lawn's just snagged so I was walking along. Well, I've got a whole rig. <laughs> Result. Result. Well, caught something. Looks like someone's actually just dropped it by the looks of it. Let's unclip this. Where is it clipped onto my spinner? I was just uh, walking along, letting the spinner trip along the floor. Someone with a nasty American snap link. Ah. You got some kind of uh What's happened here? No idea. Clip down rig well, look at it. Oh. Oh, I'll have that, put that in my box. Hundred and fifty gram, I'll have that then. Result. Okay guys, it's quarter to three, only because um I got lost, but I didn't get lost, but I walked too far. I was miles away just casting and walking back, and then uh, I got to gate 30, which is that lessing, and I thought, hang on a minute. I didn't, I didn't walk this far. I had to turn around and walk all the way back again. It's gate, gate 28, just to... <laughs> so that'd take me the next half an hour. So, uh, anyway, I'm all done, as I say. No fish today, but we got out. We got the start of the bass, bass quest going on again. Uh, for another season and the quest goes on so but yeah it's just good to get out we try that that water is still really cold I had to jump over a couple of the uh, running inlet channels and uh, I got a boot full and then when I was in I was in I thought ah oh. but uh, yeah it's that water's really cold my feet was going a bit numb and um, still really murky really murky um, this time a couple of years ago when I first started it, I think it was coming out the second lockdown when we can get out and that. And the beach was busy and the same this time of year and it was gloriously hot and the water was crystal blue. And uh, it was had a sort of like made up some feather rigs and one and three quarter ounce lead and chucking them out well, and I had about five or six bass. All on homemade feathers, but I did try that. It just cut your distance down a lot and those surf the waves are breaking quite far out today, but hey, we'll give it a go. So the quest goes on. Alright guys, thanks for watching. All the best, take care, and I'll see you again in another video.